do it. All right. Hey guys, I'm here with Tyler Scholl today. Um, Tyler is an avid cross country skier and racer, and he grew up on a cattle ranch just outside of Kremling. Um, so thanks for being with me here today, Tyler. Yeah, absolutely. Greetings. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So very first question, what was it like growing up um, and, and you still live on living on a cattle ranch? Oh man, it was exciting. It still is every day. Um, it's the opportunity to get up and work and then go ski or run and then come back and work and then go ski and run again and then work. And basically we're sun up, sun down, never a dull moment. And when your head hits the pillow, you sleep all night. No moving. That sounds very exhausting. I do have yeah. to say. <laughs> it creates a good work ethic though. And it's fun. It keeps you active all the time. So yeah. Yeah. For sure. I kind of am curious about, tell me about your connection to technology living kind of remotely. Yeah, yeah. So living on a cattle ranch, we decided when we built our house about 20 years ago to go 100% off the grid. So we live off two solar panels and just being the spot we are on the ranch and being off the grid, we have no Wi-Fi and we have zero cell service. So trying to get in touch with people can be a little tricky unless I make the classic like run to town. I'm going to go to <laughs> answer emails jump on my phone text a bunch of people so yeah, the social life can sometimes be a little bit dull I think for a lot of people though that might be like a welcome break yeah. because we're all so so attached to our phones do you feel that way or do you wish that you had a little more connectivity no you know I'm glad so I actually my parents also own a, a coffee shop in Kremlin and so I get in there every few days and I work and so I get really solid interaction but it's kind of nice at the end of the day to go home, to disconnect, to have, you know, we still have TV, we still have a dish, but just to be able to be with the family and to have that, that core value of just interacting face to face has always been awesome. And it's, it, you know, I think if I had a phone, I'd be on it, but it's, it's almost a built in way of no, <laughs> no cell service, no Wi-Fi. So it's been good. Uh, Spotify premium, downloading music. That's kind of been my go-to the last couple of years. Oh, sure. that's an airplane lifesaver for me, but wow. otherwise I'm pretty connected. <laughs> it's dead on. It's dead on. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> awesome. Um, so I do want to talk a little bit about cross-country skiing. Yeah. Um, so tell me kind of when and how you learned to cross-country ski. Yeah. So my parents got me into it. Man, I was young. I was super young. So it's one of those things I always like to say we did it the Norwegian way. <laughs> we started really young so we didn't really know what we were doing and um they kind of kind of got us just on skis moving around I was probably anywhere between three and four when I first got on my first pair of skis and then moving up through the ranks they used to take like an exercise bungee and they would clip it to a water belt that was attached to my waist and a water belt that was attached to either my mom or my dad's waist okay and then they would take off skiing and so on an uphill they would kind of pull us up and then on a downhill, we would kind of draft behind them and that way they could get their full workout in while pulling us. And then the other benefit it had was when you're skiing behind someone who's been skiing for 20 years, 25 years, who has good technique, I've always been a visual learner. So then I picked that up from a super young age. So like the technique portion always came easy to me, at least just being able to have someone in front of you all the time and you're skiing behind them and, uh, yeah, I actually remember we, we never used to use water belts. We just used to tie the bungee around our waist. I remember when I was about seven or eight, I got scared on the downhill and <laughs> sat down. And as I sat down, the bungee stretched. It probably went from eight feet to 10 feet, 12 feet, 14 feet. And finally, it unwrapped around my waist and shot. And it's got a little metal cap on the end of it. Oh, yikes. It my dad in the butt at probably 100 miles an hour. And he, uh, he probably still has a scar from that. So from that day forward, we started using water belts. So. Oh, anyway. man. Well, that sounds like a very dangerous method of training, but it must have been effective because I know that you're a very, um, I'll go ahead and say it, you're a talented cross-country skier. Mm -hmm. I Rumor has it you got the fastest time in the Latigo, was it the La Pet, the 15K? In? It would have been the 15K, yeah. Okay, so yeah, congrats. Keeping it, keeping it short, man, keeping it short. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's still good. awesome to win. <laughs> yeah, it was good. Yeah, it was fun. It was, I think, I did the 15K. I was getting ready. I had a 50K in Yellowstone the next weekend. So I was keeping it short that weekend. Oh, Keep awesome. It. What was it like cross country? Wait, so you were cross country skiing in Yellowstone? It's same, Nordic skiing, cross country. Okay. Yep. No. I was at a 50K at Yellowstone Rendezvous. It was kind of right before the whole Corona explosion happened. So wow. it was like, I think, probably the last race before everything got canceled. So that was, 
that was fun. 50K up in West Yellowstone before quarantine. Got a little outing, so that was nice. Got it out of your system before Got you like, had to be system. trapped in your house. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, that was the last hurrah for sure. That was fun. Yep. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, when did you start racing? Oh, yeah. So racing for us, a lot of people always looked at racing. So when I say my family, it's my sister who's now 23. She's always been, she's four years older than me. And then my mother and my father and myself, we would always go and race as a family just about every weekend. And so when they would go to race, instead of leaving the kids at home with a babysitter or leaving the kids in the car, they would just take us with and they would be like, well, we'll just race if you guys want to. That's and awesome. so for us, racing wasn't a, a uh, nerve wracking, really high intensity thing. It was just part of skiing. So I was like, Monday, we're going to go ski. Wednesday, we're going to go ski. Saturday, oh yeah, it's a race, but we're still skiing and we're going somewhere new with the family. And we always, it was good to get into it because a lot of soccer parents or wrestling parents, they would, you know, they'll sit on the sidelines and they'll watch their kids. But when we were out there, it was the whole family racing. And whether I was in the kids race or doing the same race as my dad or my mom or my sister, we were all racing. So it was kind of that camaraderie from day one of you ski, you race, and racing isn't this high stress thing. It's something that can be really fun. And it's a really fun incentive to train for because it's, it's kind of where you get a test where you are and see each week if you're getting better and better and better and better. It's kind of fun, kind of fun. Yeah, it sounds like your family had a really neat approach to it. They didn't like instill like nerves or like a high level of competition, but you're still out there winning races. So that's awesome. So right. since your parents taught you to ski and you, you sometimes did the same races, did it ever get competitive where you guys oh. were like, like oh. making bets or anything? <laughs> oh, absolutely. Oh yeah. Yeah, for sure. It, it turned into when I was younger of, whether or not we could beat each other. And now it's at the point of how far we can beat each other by. So the bets definitely changed over time, but oh yeah, I remember the, the probably the first ski race I ever beat my dad. That was a good day. The first ski race I ever beat my sister. That was a good day. Not for them. It wasn't. <laughs> not for, them it wasn't. Yeah, for me, it was awesome. Um, skiing always came a little bit later with maturity just for strength wise. But the, I, the first time I finally got, got, got my dad it was like yes <laughs> I'm coming for you and, I and think he's like oh no I trained him too well <laughs> like, yeah that's right you train you train the you train the monster so I think um yeah anytime you can grow up and then surpass your father that's a good time that's a really, yeah maybe not for him but for me it was <laughs> yeah. um so I know that you're a big runner do you have any other like off-season cross-country training activities that you like to do Oh boy, man. Yeah, that's my problem. I, I have to, I do too much. I, think <laughs> a little, I, I do it a little too much. It's hard for me to focus. So uh, mountain biking, man, I live for it. Running and mountain biking. Um, and my father was actually a, on the U.S. Olympic rowing team uh, wow. for, from, two, yeah, from 2000 to 2004. Um, so he rows. So in the summertime I row and then uh, I really like Olympic weightlifting, you know, squatting, power cleaning, snatching, all that fun jazz. And then and ranching. Then, like, is there anything ranching. that you don't do? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's bad. You know, I feel like I'm eating all day long because I'm doing so much. And then I got all this stuff. It's like, I'm eating and I'm losing weight. It's happening. But <laughs> I mean, not a terrible problem to have, I guess. <laughs> yeah, you know, ne never sitting, never sitting. That that's a good thing. So. It sounds like a great lifestyle. <laughs> It really is. It really is. So. Uh, well, what what kind of advice would you have for people maybe thinking about going into cross country skiing, trying it out next season, whether they're trying it for the first time or thinking about getting into racing? You know, what kind of advice would you have for them? Yeah, I think the the fun thing about cross country skiing, the best advice I could I could give to people is it's just a, a really it's a really good way to get outside. It's a really good way to um, whether it's it's a meditation or or just feeling better about ourselves or just going out and being outside and getting that fresh air. I mean, especially after what's happened in the past couple months, the best advice I could is just to get out and, and just do it. Because if you don't just try it for the first time, you're never going to know what that thrill is like. And yeah, you're going to start slow. But I mean, at one point we had to learn how to read and we had to learn how to write and it's no harder to learn how to Nordic ski. And the fun thing about Nordic skiing is you can get better year after year after year after year, and it gets more and more fun year after year after year after year. So yeah, I just would say dive, dive right in. That's the best advice. Dive right in and, 
maybe take a few lessons and, and, and yeah, the best advice I could give for sure. That's awesome advice that I think transfers to a lot of different things. For sure. Yeah. A lot, a lot of life, life lessons come from, I think, athletics. So that's one of them for sure. Would you yeah. recommend being tied up to an exercise band? <laughs> yeah, depends, depends the size of the person pulling you, right? <laughs> definitely with a water belt. Definitely you're going to want a solid water belt. No. Yeah. That would be, I wonder, that's a good question. I wonder if that would work with like an adult, if you got a really strong one, but maybe we'll, we'll set a disclaimer right now that we are not recommending that. <laughs> not recommend unless you're 60 pounds or less. Do not, not try this at home. Enter at your own risk. All that's, of the, all of the warnings. <laughs> that's exactly right. Yes. Dangerous. Well, awesome. I really, really appreciate you talking with me today, Tyler. Thank you so much. I think it's so cool to get a perspective of someone who's kind of living off the grid. And For I sure. have to say I'm a little jealous. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, come on over. It's fun. We got ski trails on the ranch and man, you gotta have the cows watch you and it's a good cheering squad. It's a good cheering squad. And yeah. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Yeah, thanks so much, Tyler. I'll talk to you later. Thank you. Okay, bye.